Okay, today we're going to be looking at Conquest in the Americas, uh, and this can be found in Chapter 15, Section 1 of your textbook. So let's get started. Uh, this lecture is going to focus more on the Spanish and their encounters um, in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, and the first encounter we're going to see is between Columbus, who is an Italian, but sailing for the Spanish, and the Tainos. Uh, and this is just going to be one of many encounters between natives um, to the Caribbean, Latin America, and Spanish conquistadors. Uh, and the Spanish are actually going to settle a few large islands in the Caribbean. Uh, the largest being Cuba, modern day Cuba. Uh, then uh, what is called Hispaniola, which is modern day Haiti and the Dominican Republic. And then finally, Puerto Rico. Uh, and the Spanish are able to do this uh, due to a few distinct advantages. Uh, ones being their munitions, uh, the guns and cannons they have, something the natives have never seen. Second is the metal armor uh, to help propel uh, attacks and other things. The third are horses, which is something completely new to the area, something uh, the natives have never seen as well. And then finally, unknowingly, is disease. Uh, and disease is ultimately going to be the biggest killer, uh, which helps uh, the very, very small amount of Spanish uh, to essentially conquer tens of millions of people. Uh, and over the course of the 16th century, 90% uh, uh, of the Caribbean, uh, the Caribbean population is going to decline by about 90%. So a large, large drop in population. Uh, the first uh, real conquistador we're going to look at is um, Hernan Cortez. And what we're going to see is that the Spanish moved from the Caribbean uh, to the coast of Mexico. In 1519, uh, almost 30 years after Columbus had set sail, uh, Cortes and only 600 men and 16 horses and some cannons are going to land on the coast of Mexico. Um, and Cortes are going to head inward um, towards the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan, the Aztecs being the strongest uh, tribe in what, would we what we would consider the middle of Mexico currently. Uh, and Cortez is going to take um, the strategy of aligning himself and seeking alliances with enemies of the Aztecs, essentially people the Aztecs had warred with or conquered at one point, and he's going to use these alliances to help overrun um, the Aztecs, who, like I said, uh, outnumbered the Spanish greatly. What we're going to see is the Aztec leader, Matazuma, pictured here, uh, learns of the impending Spanish conquest. Um, he's ultimately going to be imprisoned by the Spanish and sign over uh, land and treasure. However, it's not done yet. Um, due to other Spanish conquistadors in the area uh, and also other natives, um, Cortes and his men are kind of overwhelmed and forced out of the city by the Aztecs. Uh, he, however, is going to um, amount a, um, another attack uh, and ultimately end up conquering Tenochtitlan in 1521. Um, Tenochtitlan uh, should be known that it's uh, basically built, or well, I should say mo uh, modern day Mexico City has been built on top of this area. The other conquistador we're going to look at is a guy by the name of Francisco Pizarro. Very similar to um, Hernan Cortez in the sense of they're both seeking riches. Cortez had heard about uh, the greatness of the Aztecs, uh, their riches, their wealth, which led him to want to conquer them. The same thing is true for Pizarro, except Pizarro is going to head south. Uh, and he is interested in Peru's Inca Empire, uh, which is pictured on the map in orange. Very, very vast empire built in the Andes Mountains. Like the Aztecs and what Cortez had heard, Pizarro uh, believes them to have great riches, maybe even greater than that of the Aztecs. Uh, and so he is going to set out to conquer them. Uh, the Incan leader, Atahualpa, uh, however, is not going to give in to the Spanish. He's not going to turn it over. In fact, um, Atahualpa had just uh, basically won a civil war between the Incans. Uh, and so he was kind of assuming his role, his leadership role, uh, and was not yet ready to uh, just turn it over to some foreign invader. Um, 
despite lacking size, once again, the Spanish are able to overrun the native population, this time being the Incas. Um, and the Spanish are going to add a large portion of South America along the western coast, pictured here, which essentially runs from modern-day Peru down to Chile, um, to their new empire. And if we think back to the last lecture, um, we talked about in the end of the 15th century, Pope Alexander VI had essentially divided the non-European world in half with the line of demarcation, which roughly ran right around here giving the western half to the Spanish and the eastern half to the Portuguese.